Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel, and if you're new here, welcome and thanks for stopping by. I hope you'll consider clicking that subscribe button and sticking around for a while. I have a bunch of fun projects on the way. Today's video is part of Fun Time Friday, and I'll tell y'all a little bit about that here in a minute. Let's jump right into these eight super fun s'more themed tiered tray DIYs. DIY number one, making memories mini cutting board. To create the mini cutting board, I traced out a cutting board template that I had sketched onto a six and a half inch plywood circle that I got from Hobby Lobby. If you want, you can Google cutting board shape printable and there will be tons that you can print out and use as your template. Once I had the cutting board traced out onto the plywood circle, I used my utility knife and very carefully cut out the shape of the cutting board. The plywood cut pretty easy, I just had to score it a couple of times. Please be very careful if you choose to use a utility knife here. You can also use a pair of sharp scissors to cut the plywood as well. After I had the cutting board cut out, I took a drill with a 3 8 inch drill bit and drilled a hole at the top of the handle for some twine. And then I took some rough grit sandpaper and used it to help define the shape of the cutting board a little bit more. Once I was happy with the shape of the cutting board, I gave it one good coat of Krylon chalk paint in the color Freshly Baked. While that coat of paint was still wet, I took my wax brush and brushed on some Krylon antiquing wax in the color Dark Vintage. I absolutely love the look these two products give to a project when you mix them using this method. I did want to mention that I did this to the front and the back of the cutting board. After letting the paint completely dry, I took some vinyl that I cut out on the Cricut that says Make Memories Eat S'mores as well as a s'more that I also cut out. And then I transferred them onto the middle of the cutting board. Now if you don't have a Cricut, you can still do this project. There are a lot of other options to get the words and pictures onto the project. For example, you can use stickers from Dollar Tree, stencils, print out the words and Mod Podge them onto the cutting board, or you could even freehand the words if you like your handwriting. Once I had the words and s'more on the cutting board, I took some rough sandpaper and slightly distressed the whole cutting board until I was happy with the way it looked. This part is completely optional, but I personally love the rustic worn look and it fits in with all of my decor. To finish up this project, I took some of the thicker jute twine from Walmart and put it through the hole in the top of the handle and tied it in a knot and trimmed the ends. I am so happy with how this project turned out. It's super cute and super fun. Y'all have to let me know what you think in the comments below. As I mentioned earlier, this video is part of the Fun Time Friday playlist hosted by Tiffany over at Broke Girl Aesthetic and co-hosted by my good friend Amanda over at Six Kids and a Glue Gun. Both of these ladies are amazingly talented and I will link their channels as well as a link to the playlist down in the description box below. So be sure to check them out and see what kind of fun projects we all came up with this Friday. DIY number two, a wooden s'more. To create this faux s'more, I used a circle from a variety wood pack I picked up at Hobby Lobby and a wooden plank from Crafter Square that I picked up at Dollar Tree. For the graham cracker part of the s'more, I measured two and a half inches on the wooden plank and then I cut it out using a miter box and handsaw. I then repeated this step so that I would have two pieces of graham cracker. Once I had both pieces of graham cracker cut out, I used apple barrel paint in the color light mocha and gave the front and back three good coats of the paint, letting it dry good between coats. After letting the paint completely dry, I used apple barrel paint in the color territorial beige and the large dotting end from a dotting tool I got at Dollar Tree to put the little holes in the top of the graham crackers. While I waited on the graham crackers to dry, I gave the wooden circle from Hobby Lobby that's going to be the marshmallow to the s'more three good coats of Anita's acrylic paint and white, again letting it dry good between coats. Once everything was completely dry, I took the marshmallow and placed it in the center of one of the graham crackers and traced around it with a pencil. This is where I'm going to put the melted chocolate for the s'more. To make the melted chocolate, I used my hot glue gun on high heat and simply went around the outside of the circle I drew on the graham cracker, letting some of the hot glue drip down the side of the square to give it a gooey look until I was happy with the way it looked. Once the hot glue had completely set up, I took apple barrel paint in the color chocolate bar and gave the glue two good coats, letting it dry between coats. Since this paint was a matte finish, I wanted my chocolate to look melted, so I took some gloss Mod Podge and gave the chocolate a generous coat to set and set it aside to dry. 
After everything was completely dry, it was time to put the s'more together. And I just used a generous amount of hot glue and layered the s'more. And that's it for this one, y'all. It was super quick and super easy to make. This one is right up there with one of my favorites from this video. What do y'all think? So moving on to DIY number three. No s'mores tiered tray would be complete without a campfire to roast them on, right? So to make this little campfire, I used seven of the wood pieces from Dollar Tree and started by gluing the two largest ones together to form the base. Then I took the smallest piece and put it diagonally across the larger pieces and glued it into place. Next, I took the four remaining pieces and arranged them in a teepee-like shape and glued them into place. Now, I used hot glue to hold everything together, but I did go back once the glue was dry and reinforced it with more hot glue. To create the flames for this fire, I used these yellow flowers from Dollar Tree and removed a couple of the blooms, and then took the green plastic piece off that held the center part of the flower in place. Then I took my scissors and cut each of the petals apart. I ended up using a total of 11 petals, so just had shy of two whole flowers. Once I had the petals cut apart, I used apple barrel paints in the colors Harvest Orange, pumpkin orange, and king's gold to give them the appearance of flames. I started by brushing on a coat of the king's gold, then while it was still wet, I layered the two orange colors and blended them with the king's gold until I was happy with the color. I did try to keep the darkest orange color the brightest at the very tip of the petals. I hope this makes sense. After the petals were completely dry, I began putting them around the logs to make it look like they were on fire. I just randomly placed them until I was happy with the way it looked. To give the petals a more flame-like appearance, I went in with a small dot of hot glue and very carefully folded the tips of the petals to a point. Please be careful if you decide to make this little campfire and wear finger protectors. The glue is very hot. Next, I wanted to give the little campfire a base to sit on. I took another one of the wooden planks from Dollar Tree and used a Krylon antiquing wax and dark vintage to stain the wood. To finish up this project, once the plank was dry, I took two of the larger round wood pieces from Dollar Tree and placed one on each end of the plank and glued it into place. Then I glued the campfire right in the middle. That's it for this one. I'm kind of on the fence with this one. Let me know what you think in the comments below. For DIY number four, no tiered tray is complete without a book stack. So to make the books for the stack, I used one of the wooden stakes I picked up in a pack of 24 for like $3 and something at Lowe's and measured out three pieces at three inches long and cut them out using the miter box and handsaw. Once I had all three books cut out, I used Anita's paint in white, apple barrel paint in light mocha, and apple barrel paint in territorial beige to paint the books. I painted one book with light mocha, one book with white, and the last book with territorial beige. I did end up giving each book two good coats of paint, letting them dry between coats. Once the paint was completely dry, I cut out the words s'mores, fireflies, and campfires with the Cricut and applied them to the books. I wanted the word campfires on the darkest book, fireflies on the light book, and s'mores on the white book. Again, you can use stickers, rub-on transfers, stencils, or freehand these. You don't have to have a Cricut to do this. Then to finish up this little book stack, I hot glued all of them together and put them with the darkest book on bottom, the white book in the middle, and the light mocha book on top. Then I took some of the thicker jute twine from Walmart and put a dab of hot glue at the bottom of the bottom book and wrapped it around all the books to make it look like they were tied together. Now I didn't wrap completely. I left the bottom jute free because I wanted the stack to set level. I really do love how this stack of books turned out. So one of my favorite things about summer is definitely fireflies or as we call them here in Arkansas lightning bugs. So I thought for DIY number five, why not make a jar full of them? I started out with this color your own wooden mason jar from the 4th of July collection at Dollar Tree and gave both sides three good coats of the Krylon chalk paint in freshly baked. Once it was completely dry, I gave it another good coat of freshly baked paint and while it was still wet, I took my wax brush and brushed on a light coat of the Krylon antiquing wax in dark vintage making sure to blend it well. Once that was dry, I used a pencil to sketch out the bottom of the jar as well as the lid and then traced it out with a fine tip black paint pen. Next, I cut out the words starry skies and fireflies with my Cricut and put it in the center of the jar. Again, you can do this many other ways without a Cricut.
To put the little fireflies inside the jar, I used apple barrel paint in the color lemon in the back of a large foam paintbrush. I simply dipped the back of the brush into the lemon paint and dabbed some of the excess off on a paper towel and used it as a stamp to stamp on the little fireflies. Once the paint was completely dry, I took a smaller detail brush and some more of the lemon paint and filled in the little circles. This paint has a satin finish and I love the little bit of shine on the flat background. I'm sorry guys, I lost some footage here of where I was putting the tumbling tower blocks on the back of the jar to help it stand up, but I just hot glued three on the back and that finished up this project. This one is absolutely my favorite out of all eight that I made. Moving on to DIY number six. For this project, I used one of the three and a half inch plywood discs from Hobby Lobby and began by using some apple barrel paint in the color light mocha. First, I used some of the painter's tape to tape off the center piece of the circle so that just the bit on the top and bottom were showing. I gave these exposed areas two coats of the light mocha paint and set it aside to dry. Once the light mocha paint was completely dry, I removed the top piece of tape and used it to cover the top light mocha painted piece. Then I used the white paint and gave the area just exposed two good coats. I hope I'm explaining this right. Next, after the white paint was dry, I removed both pieces of tape and used it to tape off the edge of the white stripe and the bottom mocha stripe and painted the wooden area with two good coats of the apple barrel paint in the color chocolate bar. Once this color was completely dry, I wanted it to look like melted chocolate, so I gave it a generous coat of gloss Mod Podge. Then I took two wooden beads I had gotten from a beaded car seat from Walmart and placed them on the handle of a paintbrush and gave them a few good coats of the white paint. Next, I cut out the words let's get toasted with the Cricut and placed them with the let's and get on the top of the circle and toasted on the bottom. Once I had the words in place, I took the two beads that are now going to serve as marshmallows and decided how I wanted to place them on the center of the circle. Once I was happy with the placement, I took some small sticks I had in my stash and cut them down to size for skewers. Then I simply hot glued the marshmallow on the skewer and then glued it down to the center of the circle. To finish this sign, I hot glued a tumbling tower block to the back so that it would stand up and that was it. I think this little sign turned out so cute. I absolutely love it. Moving on to DIY number 7. For this super quick and easy DIY, I used one of the 1.9 inch floral foam balls from Dollar Tree and simply shaped it into the shape of a marshmallow. It was really easy to shape these floral foam balls by using just a little bit of pressure and rolling it on the table and using my fingers to give it a little more detailed shape. I ended up making two of these marshmallows, so I used two of the floral foam balls. Once I had the marshmallow shaped, I used two of the super long skewers from Dollar Tree and cut the pointed ends down to about how long I thought would look best. Then I simply stuck the skewer through the floral foam. Y'all, these are so easy, you don't even have to paint the marshmallows because the foam is already the perfect shade of white. To finish up this project, I hot glued the skewers in an X shape and added a simple shoestring bow. See, I told y'all this one was super quick and easy. I'm super happy with how these turned out. What do y'all think? DIY number eight, a s'mores banner. For this super quick and easy project, I used a small template that I sketched out in the shape of a banner and some watercolor paper, which is like a super thick, and textured cardstock, but you could definitely use cardstock instead if you wanted to. I simply traced out eight of the banners onto the watercolor paper and used my utility knife to cut them out. Again, if you choose to use a utility knife, please be careful. Scissors work just as well on this paper. Once I had all the banner pieces cut out, I painted two of them with two good coats of the white paint, two of them with two coats of the chocolate bar, and the last four with two coats of the light mocha paint. 
Since I wanted the chocolate to look like melted chocolate, I gave it a good generous coat of the glossy Mod Podge. Then I took the territorial beige and gave the little graham cracker pieces little dots using the small end of the dotting tool. To finish off this banner, I took the sharp end of my weeding tool and poked pilot holes in the sides of each of the banner pieces. Then using an upholstery needle and some light brown embroidery floss, I strung the pieces in order of a s'more. Graham cracker, marshmallow, chocolate, and then another graham cracker onto the floss and tied knots in each end. That was it. Super quick and super easy. I absolutely love how these two little banners turned out and they make such a statement on my tiered tray. Let me know in the comments which of these projects are your favorite. Here's the final reveal of my s'mores themed tiered tray. I am absolutely thrilled with how all these projects turned out and came together. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and if you haven't hit that subscribe button already, go ahead and click it and stick around for a while. I'm also on Instagram and I'll leave that information in the description box below if you want to follow me over there. Also, be sure to check out the rest of the playlist and the ladies in the description box down below. Who knows, y'all may find something you might like. I'll see y'all next time. Um.